Alright guys, today I'm showcasing the build I really like using the most in the game. It utilizes mainly automatic weaponry. You can bring whatever automatic weapon you want, but this is not for shotguns or snipers. That'll be for a different time. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is the skills and we'll move on from there. So, starting off, I'm bringing Ammo Specialist Basic for an extra 20% ammo capacity, as well as getting some skills deeper in the tree. That being, Scrounger. As long as we have edge, ammo drops have a 10% chance of replenishing one of your throwables. This build relies a lot on throwables. Well, not relies, utilizes, I guess is the better word to use, but we'll get to that. Next up, plate up. As long as you have grit, ammo drops will instantly regenerate your current armor chunk. This one skill makes armor last a hell of a lot longer than normal, mainly because you're constantly regening your armor rather than having to wait the uh, 8 to 10 second regen speed for four plate armor. We'll get into how this works a little bit here in just a sec in the next tree. Moving on, we have Mower Basic. This is another way to gain edge. Every 35 bullets we shoot, we gain edge. This is just so we can get the other skills in the tree. Recoil Handling. Reducing recoil is always good. As long as we have edge, gun will kick less. Next, Replenish. You're going to notice that I have Replenish and not Ammo Funneling. This is actually on purpose. Let me explain why. So, with Plate Up, this skill activates when your ammo reserve number gets replenished, not when your bullets get fed back into your magazine. This skill really should read, as long as you have grit, ammo being restored to your ammo reserves regenerates your current armor chunk because, I mean, if you put these two skills together being, as long as you have edge, killing someone, pick up the ammo. So basically, if you have edge and you kill somebody, the ammo will go right back into your magazine, right? This does not proc plate up. It's only for the reserves. So if you bring both, the skill will still work some of the times, but not all the times because, you know, if you're being ammo efficient, sometimes you can get away with, you know, getting a headshot, gaining two bullets back, that will cause plate up. But if you want it to work every time you get a kill, like how I do, you're not going to want to ammo funnel, sadly. I don't know if this is intended. I don't know if this is a bug. Maybe a good fix. Maybe the build can get updated. But for now, we're just doing replenish. So as long as we have edge, anyone we kill will instantly get their ammo. So if we have both edge and grit, which is pretty easy to get with this build, we'll essentially be on kill, regening our armor. Pretty damn good. All right, moving down a bit. We have tank aced. Now you don't have to ace it. I personally do just for taste, but I'll explain why here in a second. So this is one of the other ways you can gain grit with the ace version of the skill. The basic version is increasing the regen speed of your armor chunks by 20%. We also get two extra charges in the armor bag that is the deployable we'll be using. And then acing it whenever one of your armor chunks breaks, gain or refresh grit. This is good for grit upkeep. I like having grit. Taking less damage is always a good thing. And with this, if you're constantly taking damage, you'll still be able to, you know, reduce that amount of damage and increase the amount of hits you can take by acing out a tank. Next up, we have extra plates, pretty straightforward. We want more armor, so we're gonna bring more armor in the armor bag, two extra plates to be precise. And finally, we're gonna make that armor work for us even a bit more with armor up. Interacting with any armor bag will restore an additional chunk, which means by using the armor bag twice, we have our all of our armor replenished. Next up, we have Sharpshooter Basic. This is a good way to gain edge in this build. Standing still for a second and a half while ADSing will gain edge. We then grab a long shot, so as long as we have that edge and aiming down sights, distance penalties do not apply to headshot multipliers. So, we will essentially be doing more damage at longer range as long as we're aiming down sights and getting headshots. Pretty straightforward. Next up, we have cutting shot. As long as you have edge, your armor penetration is increased. This is effectively decreasing your time to kill enemies in this game, also saving you bullets. So, a really great skill to have. I use it in almost every build in the game. Now I have speed aim on the capstone skill here put on, mainly because, like I said, you can use a lot of different primary weapons as long as they're automatic. Things like the scar tend to be a little bit sluggish and, you know, slow to aim down sights. So speed aim kind of helps reduce that. It's just currently a preference. I think it's uh, kind of nice to have. I'm then grabbing the capstone skill in escapist called swift. Basically increase our movement speed. It's sprint speed, actually, while uh, our mask is on. Pretty good. Getting out of, uh, you know, the line of fire quicker, thus saving more armor, is a good thing, I think. 
Next, we're using two skills in Demolitionist. First one, Demolitionist Basic. Explosions caused by your shots or throwables have their area effect increased by 20%. I'm grabbing this. It's a pretty decent skill to have for a basic skill, but it's mainly for the second skill in the tree, Cooker. This is going to be a really easy way to gain grit in the build. Whenever you hold a throwable for at least 1.5 seconds before throwing it, gain grit. So basically, you can now gain grit for, without exposing yourself to the enemies. You can simply cook a grenade, peek around, throw it, and then you'll have your, uh, your grit back. If you're out of nades and scrounger isn't really working for you, you know, you're getting unlucky with it, just not getting your nades back. We also have Enforcer Basic. If you're close by two enemies and kill them within four seconds, you gain grit. We also are grabbing the Quick Reload and Combat Reload skills in Enforcer just to basically upkeep the edge and grit as well as make our reloads fast as possible. Because like I said, we're going to be re reloading a lot in this build since Ammo Funnel's not into it. We will be keeping the ammo up, but we will have to reload quite a bit. So, with Quick Reload, as long as we have both Grit and Edge, which we have multiple ways of gaining both of those in the build, the reload speed will increase. And if we want to upkeep both of these buffs, we have Combat Reload. So if you reload a weapon early while there's still some bullets in the magazine, you'll refresh both of them. Really good upkeep. You'll see me in the gameplay basically shoot a pistol once and then reload it, just to keep these buffs active. It's a pretty nice skill to have. The last skill in the build I'm rocking is Quick Draw. So like I said, some primary weapons are really sluggish and their you know, weapon swap speed is kind of reduced and it's pretty slow to pull them out. Quick Draw helps that out. All right, that's it for our skills. Now on to our weapons. Personally, this is a preference. Like I said, you could use any automatic primary weapon you want, but I'm using the AK or the KU-59 for that matter, right? I spec it this way. Express Muzzle Brake. Rail Barrel, Perforated Grip, Quick Pull Mag, HQ Stock, Sheath RDS, and an Angled Ghost Grip. And the reason why I'm using the KU-59 is I think it's a nice middle ground between damage and a quick reload. The VF-7S is a very good gun, don't get me wrong, but not really a great for a bullet hose, mainly because even if you bring the extended magazine that makes the magazine size 30, the reload is slower, and even with the quick reload skills, it's a painfully slow reload. The AK with its quick pull mag still has a 30 round magazine, does decent damage, and uh, has a much quicker reload so I can keep those buffs procced more, I can shoot more bullets, it just feels better with the KU-59. You could even use this build with the Northwest if you wanted to, but please don't use the Northwest, <laughs> it's not the best, use a CAR-4 instead. As for a secondary, you can really bring any secondary you want. The gameplay you'll be seeing has me use the strike with the suppressor. Now you could bring that in case you want to help out with stealth a little bit, but I mainly have it just for a challenge to get suppressor kills with the strike. Uh, you could really use whatever you want though. Personally though, if I can make a recommendation, bring one of these four pistols here just because they are you know, magazine fed rather than the revolver. Uh, it's easier to upkeep both your edge and grit if you simply just shoot one bullet and do a quick magazine change rather than doing the exact same reload on both the revolvers. But again, just a preference, if you want the damage done with uh, both of these revolvers, have at it, totally up to you. For the overkill weapon, I'm using the Red Fox. Now you could obviously make a argument that you could use the Mamba since you're using Demolitionist Basic. However, this thing is still not that good as of time of recording. I really don't want to be killing myself as well as any civilians around the map. I'd much rather just bring the Red Fox, it's a much better gun. For armor, we're using the Heavy Ballistic Lining. It's a very good choice since this build really revolves around armor. Now we are going to be the slowest we can possibly be, but that's why we got things like Swift to move a bit quicker. But armor upkeep, you're going to be taking a lot of hits on overkill, so this is going to definitely keep you alive for longer. You don't really have to worry too much about the armor regen speed being super slow because we have played up. Next, our deployable. Of course, it's the armor bag. We put points into it to have extra chargers. We want to bring it so we can stay alive for longer. This is arguably the best deployable in the game. So bring an armor bag. Not like I really had to tell you that, though. Now, for the throwable, I use frag grenades. You could do flashbangs if you want, because the still skill works. But please know that since you have to cook these for a second and a half, these will be still having a timer after you throw them to explode. The reason why I bring frags is that they deal damage and they cook in your hand. So if I see a shield, I can cook it for a second, throw it, and either he's going to take damage by the nade or he's going to turn around really quickly and I can shoot him in the back 
So I personally like frag grenades, but please bring whatever you want. For tools, honestly, it doesn't matter too much. I think the better one for this build in particular is the Infrasonic Mine. I really only think the good tools in Loud are the Infrasonic Mine. There can be a case made for the motion sensor if you run skills that, you know, affect marked enemies. But since that build is not being, or those skills aren't being utilized uh, at all, I'm bringing the Infrasonic Mine. I'm able to stun a few enemies, like say, in a doorway or around a corner if I'm running low on ammo or something. And yeah, that's the build. Not sure if it has a name yet or anything. It definitely could probably use some refinement. If you think you can touch it up in any way, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you change or what you think would be better. And I hope you guys enjoy. Do as I fucking say.
The Great, you have job. it. Now, get to the Ooh. office.
Thanks. It's a fucking shield!
Thanks for checking out the build video, you guys. I hope you like it. It's my first build in Payday 3, and I think it's a pretty solid one to start off with, but let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Two links I want you guys to interact with before you head out. Number one being our Discord link. Get involved with the community. You can chat with me and all the others that are watching the videos in our Discord server. Next is my Twitch link. I stream Payday 3 pretty regularly on Twitch. If there's any questions you want to ask me or maybe just hang out, play a few games with me, go ahead and follow me there. But for now, that's everything. Hopefully you guys have a good one. I'll catch you guys soon. Take it easy.